Hey guys, this is Shane here from Echo Soundworks. In this video, we're gonna finish up that tech house banger we started last week. So if you missed that video, we kicked off a two-part series last week where we're gonna make a tech house track from scratch. Now, if you wanna watch that video, link will be down below in the description. In this video, we are gonna be picking up right where we left off and we're gonna be adding a drop to that track. All right, so let's hear the final result. So before we get started, just so you know, you can download these presets and these samples for free. Link is in the description. And yeah, there's no you know huge download gate you have to go through to get them. I'm not gonna ask for your mother's maiden name and your social security. It's just basically a free order from our website. So if you want the drums and the bass and the lead that I'm gonna be using in this video, check that link out down below. So let's get started. So I'm gonna switch up the format of this video a little bit from the first video in this series because it would be too long if I didn't. It took me about an hour and 12 minutes to make the drop and to get it to a point where I actually liked it. So we're gonna go backwards in this. I already have the drop done as I'm starting the video. I actually filmed the first version and I have the whole hour, but you guys have better things to do than watch me and listen to me for a whole hour, I'm sure. So with this format, I can talk you through the decision-making process, talk you through sound design and music theory of Tech House, while also walking you through my decision-making process and how I ended up getting to where I got, and you can see the evolution of the drop. All right, so let's get into it. Any Tech House drop is going to be focused and centered around your drum groove and your bass line. The drum groove is going to be a kick, a clap, maybe a snare, and your hats. That's, we usually get you there. Now you can also have some offbeat percussion and get a little bit more, you know, adventurous with it, but that's the bass component or components for a drum groove in Tech House. The bass line is usually going to consist of a subby, Kind of a square, maybe a little bit of a saw element involved, filtered out bass that's fairly mellow. You're not think, don't think like growls and wub wubs and nasty basses. It's fairly subdued, not a lot of high end frequency content in a tech house bass. So, outside of that, let's talk about the first bass line and drum group, drum loop that I made or groove that I made that didn't work. So, this purple track here is has all the hallmark, hallmarks of a tech house drum loop. Right, we have analog sounding drums, a clap, and hats. The reason why snares don't get used that much is I'm assuming it's a pain in the ass to mix them with the basses. The basses live in the low, the lows and the low mids, and if you have a thick, kind of a chunky snare, you're gonna be cutting out a lot of the snare, so it's like, just use a clap. I'm assuming that's mostly why you hear claps in Tech House. Just, it just works. Now, this rhythm is fine, it's very Chris Lake Fisher-esque with the drums. And my first bass line just wasn't fitting when I played it with the rest of the track. And I used a classic, typical sounding Tech House bass. It sounds like this. Right? It's a filtered out kind of a saw square sub type sound. And it has all those elements in there. It's got a lot of mid-range content. And it should work right and i don't mind this sound but what i ended up doing was i ended up switching out the drum groove and made it a little bit left of center for tech house so i thought why not go all the way with that motif and that's the drop that you heard so let me play you the first drop sans the kick well not the whole drop but i'll play the first bass line with the drums and i'm going to play it in isolation so you're just going to hear that So I didn't go through and tighten up the bass line in terms of how long each note was in a syncopation. And that's something that can really add to the quality of your Tech House bass line. Because there's a big difference between it being repetitive and it being catchy. So just changing syncopation, adding swing to certain notes can have a huge impact on your Tech House bass lines. So that sounded okay on its own. But when I played it with the pre-drop vocals, it did not sound okay to me. It sounded like I was losing energy and that the song was kind of traveling backwards energetically. Drive each other mad. 
Drag each other. And I think what led to that was the very uh, kind of uh, intense boots and hat vibe with this classic tech house drum drum loop or drum groove, I should say. And then the bass line had these gaps in between it because a lot of tech house bass lines do. There's little pauses, little syncopations, little rests, and it didn't maintain the energy of the pre-drop vocal. Now, the reason for that is because I chose a pre-drop vocal that has a lot of notes to it. It's actually a discernible melody. A lot of Tech House tracks don't do this, and now I probably know why they don't. It's a little bit easier if you don't. For instance, if I had just uh, kept with this two or three note, you know, drive each other, drive each other mad, it'd be way easier to go into that bass, bass line you just heard. Drive each other mad, mad. Drive each other mad. Drive each other mad, mad. Drive each other mad, mad. Right, and then if it just went straight into that, now the bass line is actually increasing in energy because there's more notes, there's more of a discernible rhythm and pocket groove. But that wasn't the case. I had this section with, a, with an actual melody, the down, 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 you know, that whole thing. So what I needed to do is change up basically my entire approach to this drop. So I went and got super caffeinated. I had two shots of espresso and uh, overly caffeinated Shane is much better at music than under caffeinated. So I came back and I made a drum loop that is very left of center for Tech House. It still has the clap. It still has a kick. It's not as old school analog style kick, but I literally layered in Foley. There's a lot of offbeat percussion. Check it out. Right, so instead of the boots and hats, I went to more of a syncopated rhythm with a tambourine and shaker. Now, the bass, I decided to, hey, well, let's why not? Let's switch this up. I want the, the actual melody of the bass line, the, the notes, to be tech house. But I wanted to go to a different sound as opposed to this style of, you know, bass that we hear in a lot of tech house. So I actually bounced this certain bass in place a few times, processed it, and it actually started sounding like a real electric bass or like a hybrid electric bass with a synth bass. And then I decided to layer that with a bass that gave it, and that's why I named it this, more harmonic content. That's why it's called the harmonic bass. You put those two together. And you have a tech house bass line, but not a tech house sound design oriented bass line. So I really like that vibe with the drums. Check it out. thought it was interesting. Now, in terms of how well it fit with my you know, pre-drop section, it fits so much better because the reason why the other one wasn't fitting was it lost energy. Now we have the down, 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 down. And you'll notice that with the way that this, for this new bass line is structured, we have a lot of notes in the beginning, and then we have some spaces and some syncopation versus the initial bass line I wrote was a lot of rests and syncopation in the beginning and more of a you know, baseline in the next section. So that's why it didn't work energetically. And this is why the new drop is the one I went with because it seems like that track's actually gaining energy heading into the drop. All right, so now we've covered those two elements, let's move on to the other elements of the drop. Now, I already said that the bass and the drums are the most important parts, but honestly, it's all important in Tech House because it's it, without, without it all, it sounds pretty bad. Let me mute the ear candy synths, the synths that connect you know, the different sections of the drop together. And if we don't have those, the drop starts to sound very boring and very repetitive. I mean, I guess it works for the first pass of the drop. And then you could make it a little bit more uh, 
intricate or have more elements come in later. But I wanted to switch things up and not make it that simple. That seems kind of like, you know, something Tech House would have done a year ago. So what I ended up doing was I added these different ear candy elements into the mix. Now, the most important one, I think, is this connecting synth in the drop. This synth right here connects our drop down with the vocals. And I made this in the, in the previous video. This one right here. And then it just fades to nothing. And that connects those two ideas, I think, so well. And I think it's very important to the drop. Now, this sound right here. This is basically the drop down saw from Fisher's track, you little beauty. I just played a little chord in key. You could just do one note even. And that also helps get you, you know, some ear candy in the drop. Now, Tech House makes use of lasers and zaps and syncopated high pitch synths all the time. So that's why I did with this one right here. I actually tried it out at, you know, the beginning of the drop and then four bars later, but I decided to go with this synth here, this drop down synth, this Fisher drop down synth, and then four bars later or a few bars later, because if you're counting from when it ends, but from when it starts, it's gonna be four bars. You're gonna hear this other sound and it sounds like this. There's the first one and now the second one. And just a slight pitch bend up and I'm automating some reverb up as well as it plays. So it has some nice space, adds some nice depth to the mix. And then we go back into the turnaround, which brings back that synth that tied the drop together the first time. So we put that all together and we have the first half of the drop. Now, I also did something in the turnaround, the bar turnaround going into the drop, which I ended up really liking and I accidentally did it because I copied and pasted something I didn't mean to. When we went to the, when we left the, basically the intro of our track into our breakdown, the drums got real dry and they went to just hat and clap. I actually went back to that leading into the second half of the drop. Right, and that was a pretty cool way to basically disengage the listener's ear from the energy so the second half of the drop sounds that much bigger. Now, in terms of new instruments that I added to the second half of the drop, I, I added like a vocal chop, which doesn't ever really happen in Tech House, but it's heavily filtered, heavily processed. It's her drop-down vocal from the basically the pre-drop section. It sounds like this. Please, come take it out on me, me, me. And I added reverb, kickstart for a sidechain, a lot of EQ. E the kickstart is doing that, you know, boots and hats vibe. <laughs> and then we have H delay and then gatekeeper adding an even more intricate rhythm and spreading out the sound a little bit. Right, so it's definitely tucked into the back. And then I have my tiny lead. It's playing a baby arp. And that with the bass line adds a nice new element, new wrinkle to the second half of the drop. So it's kind of more of like an ambient style background lead, if that makes any sense. But in context with the mix, it works. All right, so that's the end of this walkthrough, guys. I think we covered a lot of ground in about 10 minutes, which was what I was hoping for. So if you have any questions or comments, let me know below and I'll try to answer those as fast as I can and get back to you as soon as I can. And guys, if you need any of these sounds from this drop, if you think it'll help you with your Tech House Productions, link is below. Like I said in the intro, you're not gonna have to jump through a bunch of annoying hoops to get it. It's just a free order from our page. Now, in a few days, we are gonna drop a free Tech House pack on Halloween. It's going to be a little bit more comprehensive than what you're going to download in the download description below. It's going to have a bunch of serum presets and some samples. I think it's a great starting point for you guys to get some new tech house presets. All right. So that's going to sum up this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, you can post those below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. If you guys aren't subscribed to our channel, you know the drill. Hit that subscribe button. The support really does mean a lot to us. And if you guys haven't ever checked out our website, echosoundworks.com, definitely head on over there. There's a ton of free content, samples, loops, and presets. And of course, there's some premium sound sets and sample packs as well. And lastly, if you guys use Instagram, consider giving us a follow. We run a lot of contests, giveaways, and promotions on that platform. And I think you guys will like what we're doing over there. All right, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.